Okay, let's look at installing Ubuntu Server. Now, I've already got my VM created. I've got my ISO attached to it. When you do this, you want to make sure that you are connected to an external switch because you're going to need to be able to download software uh, into the Ubuntu Server. Um, you won't need it for the install, although it will take advantage of it if you have it, but at some point you're going to need it. So let's go ahead and start our virtual me uh, machine and we will boot off of our ISO image or if you're doing this off a physical computer you might be booting off of a CD or a um, bootable flash drive. Okay so English is what I want so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on English and then I'm going to install Ubuntu server. So hit enter again. Now one thing to bear in mind is that Ubuntu Server does not come with a desktop. You can add one later, but you don't have all of the management tools um, in the desktop. If you want that, you might want to look at something different like SUSE. Now the other thing is it is going to give you, because it's a command line operating system, Linux is by uh, default. Since it's a command line operating system, you're going to get a lot of these messages. And you're going to get some of them that look like errors. And don't worry about it too much. Unless we get something that actually causes a break, we're not going to stress out over any of these errors. All right. What language do we want? Well, we want English. And because this is a command line operating system, see I have no mouse here, so I'm doing all of this by hand or by keyboard. So keyboard layout English, if I want to change I can use my up and down arrows to move through my options. But I'm happy with US English so I'm going to click next. Ethernet 00, zero or Ethernet 0 and I'm so used to using my mouse to point things out right here. We have identified an Ethernet interface, we're calling it Ethernet 0. We're assigning IP address via DHCP before. If I want to, I can hit enter and go in and change some of these settings. I don't. We'll actually talk about doing that later on in the quarter. Uh, so at the moment, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click done. We're not using a proxy address, so I'm just going to click done. Uh, we're not using an alternative mirror. The default one is fine, so we'll click done. Now, how do we want to do the configuration? <clears throat> or how do we want to configure the hard disks? So we can do the entire hard disk, we can do the entire hard disk and set up LVM, or we can do a manual configuration. In this case, we want to keep this nice and easy, so we're going to use the entire disk. And then it's going to identify, choose a disk to install to. It's already selected which one we're going to use, and we only have one. Um, we can do some additional configuration here if we want to, but at the moment let's keep it with the operating system determining what it wants. Because if we do the volumes incorrectly, we can create a major problem. So we're going to click Next, or Done. Uh, file System Summary tells us what we're doing. Our mount point, let me move the up here. All right, so mount point is going to be root. It's going to be 127 gigabytes. It's going to be new, running the ext, uh, yeah, ext4 um, file system. Um, the devices that we're using, the partitions that we're creating. So we're happy with all of it. So we click done. Warning says, you know, if you do this, it's going to wipe everything out. Yes, we want to continue. All right, and then put in our name, uh, the server's name. I'm going to call it. Ubuntu Ah, I can't use that. I keep typing without looking at it. Let's use lowercase Ubuntu. There we go. Ubuntu. There we go. Pick a username. I'm going to go ahead and do David again. Got to be lowercase. Password. And I'm going to set a password and then down to done and hit enter. Alright, do we want to install OpenSSH? OpenSSH is an open source SSH server tool. Basically we use it for remote connectivity. Um, we're going to say not at this point. This is something we may come back to and do a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and use my drop down arrow. Now notice underneath all of this 
you see the right at the very uh, bottom it says install progress installing kernel it's working on the install even though we're still answering questions for it so that's kind of cool um, it doesn't make us answer all the questions and then make us wait it does it all at the same time all right popular snap-ins that we can add to and these are lots of different things that we can download and add into our server um, we're actually going to skip all of this at the moment. If you wanted some of them, you can move down and hit a space bar to select or deselect. So, um, for the moment, we're going to skip all of these and keep moving through our install process. All right, here is where we're at. So, we are currently installing the kernel and you see the little thing spinning there indicating that the server or the kernel install is running and then everything that's that it's already completed so far okay also down at the bottom notice our progress indicator we are on step 11 out of 13. all right so this is going to take a couple of more minutes so i'm going to go ahead and pause this system or this um video and then we'll pick it up when our server is done installing or when it moves to the next stage of installing okay so across the top it tells us that our installation is complete however if we look down it looks like it's still working all right this is why we said we should probably go ahead and be connected to the internet with a windows server once i complete my installation one of the first things i do is i need to run out and install updates with ubuntu server it does the install and then immediately starts downloading updates so that's what you see going on right now in downloading and installing security updates sitting there spinning or on step 12 out of 13 we have two options here let me get connected back to this we can view the full log or we can cancel the update and reboot or we just sit and wait and if we sit and wait it will finish doing its security updates and then we'll be ready to reboot and have everything already updated for us so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again we're gonna let this finish doing its downloading and installing of updates okay so our security updates are finished our installation is now showing is complete so we can just hit enter to reboot and it will shut down the system again remember we're not worried about things like this top one up here that says failed we're not going to worry about things like that too much we are going to remove our installation media it's already popped it out and then press enter and when the system reboots it should come up with a fully clean fully installed ubuntu server system so that's a basic ubuntu server install